Are you guys ready for this? Heat sink number 12 at the request of Pablo. Let's take a look at the specs. This is going to be the NEO M.2 2280 SSD rocket heat sink built in cooling fan M3. And if you remember previously, we've already looked at this particular model. This is the M4, which is the C2600 2, and this one is the M3. I know, M3 for the M2. It's for the M.2 NVMe. And let's look at the components. Okay, product description. This supports an M.2 2280, single sided and dual sided. And I'll show you a picture where we can take a look at the elongated holes so we will get some compression. Three components, aluminum, stainless, and copper. Now this one's different because this uses dual copper heat pipes instead of three or four copper heat pipes. The data cable, 50 centimeters long, so that should reach wherever we need to. Yes, this is powered, which means we're going from passive cooling to active cooling. The fan, 30 millimeter, three pin RPM, thermal tape screws, and a screwdriver. Now this heat pipe is different than the others. There's a drawing that says the most effective transformation by combining two structures of impurities and copper powder. They've done a cutaway. Well, rest assured, we are not doing a cutaway, but I want to know what's going on. So when we get into this, we look at the three main components, which is the wraparound bracket, the thermal pads, top and bottom, and the heat sink. So we have four comments we need to work through. I'll bring those up in just a minute. Pablo number one. Of the four things we do, which will be, and we're going to add a fifth thing to that, bear with me. We're going to do our unboxing, inspection, installation, and test. And since the parameters for this are a little different, because remember when we started all this stuff with heat sinks, and yes, I've updated the chart, I'll show you that in a minute. This is all about number one, dual M.2 NVMe adapters, and number two, about a quad adapter. Number three was on a motherboard. This is only going to work on a motherboard. It will not work on the others. So no super micro dual M.2 NVMe adapter, strictly motherboard. Let's do the unboxing. Now it looks like the box has a factory seal, but it's either been uh, not quite covered or somebody else already uh, opened it. I'm not quite sure. Can't tell right there. So let's see what we've got inside. Now we've been asked twice about this. The first time I said no way because it didn't work with our parameters. But then the second time, Pablo made a contribution to make this work. So I said, okay, let's make this happen. It has some weight to it. I can feel it. And uh, as I look at it and examine it, I can't tell yet that these are elongated holes. But if we look at the drawing on Amazon, those look like it. So when we get the screws off, we'll test. Two screws on each side, four screws. So the bottom bracket is stainless steel. The heat sink is aluminum. Looks like the fins are also aluminum. And then our dual copper heat pipe. So we're going from four heat pipes to three heat pipes, now to two heat pipes. I have looked at some of the... Uh, other users who've talked about this and they're talking about temps in the 40s so that's got me kind of excited and this fan as I mentioned the four things we do number five I think we're going to see if we can take that fan out and replace it so that means instead of doing two tests we're going to, have to do three one we're going to test it with the fan installed active cooling number two I want to test it passive cooling and then number three we're going to replace that fan and we'll do it with active cooling with a different fan that hopefully is going to be a little bit quieter now the next part of this is we're going to have to disassemble the previous heat sink that we had installed on the motherboard, which means I've got to pull the video card. So let's identify the test system we're working with. This is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare. This time slot and lane assignment doesn't matter because we're going to be working with the M.2 on the motherboard. So instead of identifying the slots and lane assignments, what we'll do is identify the M.2 connectors on the motherboard. All right, one and two are to the CPU direct, three and four, which is under one heat sink, which is under the video card, those two are through the chipset. We're going to be dealing with the second position, and that uses four PCI Express lanes. So there's nothing we need to do in the BIOS because we're not using the Super Micro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter. The way that thing sits up, ain't going to happen. Strictly motherboard. And uh, you've got to have clearance above it, which means no cards can overlap it. So because of the alignment of that drive with the slot, as with the previous, I cannot use, as you can see right here, there's a single lane slot right there that I cannot use. I cannot use with this heat sink, nor can I use with this heat sink. So that means no single lane capture card. Got to pull the video card out so that we can gain access to the heat sink. The double screw came out. Perfect. And we have our drive. And of course this is, I expect this Digifast will come off pretty easy. And of course the drive we're testing with is the WD Black SN850. 
Now, this is probably going to be the last of these class of drives. And when I say that, after the presentation we watched with the uh, I.O. optimization with AMD and Fison, there's three other drives we're going to need to be looking at going forward. And I'll have a list of those three drives up. And of those I.O. optimizations, I expect we're going to be exploring some of that to improve our results with some of our activities, not only with single drives, but drives in RAID. So for all you storage junkies, stay tuned. And this particular heat sink has got to be one of the easiest we've had to work with, and I really like the results. And I can tell you that uh, thermal pad and that memory, even though it didn't feel like we had compression, is stuck to that heat sink. So there's that thermal pad. Now, even though I'm putting a protector on these pads to protect them, the cover, when we retest that device, we will try new thermal pads. So I went together and came apart nice and easy. And I didn't think we had any compression on that, but apparently we had a little bit. Okay, so much for the Digifast, which, yes, we will revisit that when we change out thermal pads. Another video. Set that aside. Now for the NEO. The NEO M3. I like the way it keeps everything right in line. There's nothing extending out. So that's good. And the notch we're going to be looking at right here. So from our purposes, the way we always assemble these, notch will be on this side. So when that goes on the motherboard, it'll be like this when I set it in and put the screw down right here. So let's get this disassembled. And yes, those are elongated holes. And these screws definitely have larger heads on them. I appreciate that. I like that. So we're going to get some compression with this. So we can use this with single-sided and double-sided to reiterate that fact. The fan we're going to change out when we get ready to do the third test happens to be a Noctua. And no, I could not find a Noctua 30 millimeter. However, after reading the comments and reviews on Amazon, somebody did it with a 40 millimeter. So that's what we're going to try. We'll see how that works out. Now we should have some more stuff in the box, which we do. And a screwdriver, a warranty card, a thank you note, two extra screws. One of those looks like a standoff. Good. A cable strap, screwdriver that hopefully may be magnetic. Yes, it is. That's a strong magnetic screwdriver. And it's got a longer uh, blade on it, like that. Two thermal pads and, of course, the instruction manual. Let's see how that works out. All right, package contents, main heat sink with fan, the bottom mount, two thermal pads, screwdriver, two fixing screws, fixed column, guarantee card, warranty card, user manual. Features the add-on heat sink fan combo for the Bear M.2 2280 solid state drives. Yes, consists of a PCB fan, aluminum heat sink reduces temperature by at least 25%. Well, if it's in the 40 degrees and our stock on that drive Bear has been 92 degrees, let's hope we stay under 80 degrees. And based on what people have said at 40, that's a lot more than 25. Anyway, compatible with 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. All the heat sinks that we've been working with and all the M.2 drives we've been work utilizing are 2280. Applied to an M.2 NVMe SSD with chips, in other words, memory, on one side and both sides. So single-sided and double-sided. 30 millimeter silent fan, 8500 RPM, no speed adjustment. Okay. That's a detail that I've been looking for, and I've been wondering how they were doing that with a three-pin fan. They don't. It's just on or off, which is uh, the reason we're going to put the uh, Noctua four-pin fan, test number three. Four-pin motherboard power interface, stable, simple, versatile, easy to use. So we'll be using a uh, pulse wave modulation. Specification, fan rating, line length, airflow, TDP 25 watts, four millimeter heat pipe, two, weight, dimensions, and the front fin, there are nine of those. Good to know. Okay, the installation instructions. Number one, unscrew the four screws, which we've done. That gives us that assembly so the carriage bottom is loose. Then we'll put a thermal pad in step two in the carriage. I'll do a dry mount, put the memory in, the M.2 NVMe. And remember, the definition of NVMe is non-volatile memory express. So again, to reiterate, millimeter pad on the bottom, put the memory in, put the one millimeter pad on top, Put the sandwich back together with a heat sink. Put those screws in. Squeeze that in for some compression. And then we we'll go to step three. Install that in the system. Plug in the drive as in step number four. We'll be in business.
Sounds simple enough. And the back side's blank. So nice instruction sheet. The thermal pads have not been used. Um, the way these cards have been handled, it kind of looks like somebody has been in this box before, but I don't know that for a fact. But if the thermal pads have not been used, then uh, we should be good to go. I'm always concerned buying something on Amazon that's been opened. Let's do our thing. Base comes off, fits tight, but not too tight, but it's tight. And it's stainless steel. I want to do a quick examination of the bottom so we can see how those heat pipes are positioned and they're flattened so we have a flat base. Copper, aluminum, aluminum fins, and then a fan to help dissipate that heat. So we're going to see how effective this is. So I'm going to do a dry assembly, turn that around, and there should be no left or right, which there's not. It'll go either way. However, because of clearance in the computer, I think what I'm going to do, when this is sitting in the computer this way, because we have the video card over here on this side, I think what I'll do is turn this like I have it now so that fan would blow that way. Otherwise, I need to turn it this way so the fan will blow that way. That's what we'll do, which means the power cable will be coming out the back instead of having to come out the front. Nice. Okay. The base, I don't know if it's just me, but that looks like that's had something in there. Yeah, it has. Either they didn't clean that real good or something else has been in there. So I'm going to rub that down with my glove just to clean it. Dry symbol. Double check my pads. Let's get in on those real tight. Now those two thermal pads are exactly the same. I thought one was thicker than the other. They look thin to me. Anyway, two thermal pads. We'll do a dry assembly from the notch back. I like the way that sits. And the drive, of course, we're using is the WD Black SN850. PCI Express 4.0 second generation. So we will get 7,000 megabytes on the read. Dry assembly to the notch. We will zero out on the left. Looks good. And on the notch on the right, we clear by about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm good with that. So we will take a micro screwdriver, straight flat blade. We'll get one layer off. Save my protective sheets. Give that a little bit of a roll. Start at this end because that's more critical. Drop that in. First pad. Now this is probably going to stretch a little bit. So I'm going to start at the left end where the notch is and pull to the right. So I'll get the straight blade screwdriver in there. Give that a pull. Well, that went down the best of any of them yet. Came right off. Perfect. Now the camera may fluctuate a little bit because it's on autofocus as it goes in and out looking for something to uh, show attention on. Okay. First pad is secure. Both covers are off. We'll supply the memory. Drop that in. Now the second thermal pad will go on top and this time I'll start from this end so if there's any stretching it'll go that way. Peel the top off. Set that aside and save it. Give it a roll. Press that down. Looks pretty good. And this time I will peel again from this end in case we get a little bit of a stretch. Peels off nice and easy. Save those covers. Now remember, this is going to go in the machine this way. And because the video card is on this side, I want to take the fan, put the fan on that side, and it should blow air out that way toward the CPU. Does that make sense? So with that, this direction, I'll turn this and we'll put the fan on this side. Drop it in. And look at those elongated holes. Man, I like that. Now this will only drop so far because the way this is machined, there's a machined edge right there. So it can only go so far. So even though I'm pushing and I've got compression, I can't, I can't get any further than this machined edge that it sits up to. So the only thing I could do is if I use thicker pads, I might get a little bit better compression. But based on the results we got last time, we did pretty good with that one. So we'll see how this one does. So with the elongated screwdriver they provide and these four screws that have large heads on them, I like those. See if I can get that cable out of my way while we do this. And alignment looks good. Clearance looks good. Screws are in, but they're not tight yet, not until I get the other side, because I can push that in, if you'll notice, just a tad bit more. You see that line right there. Let's see if we can push that down just a bit. Yeah, I can. I'm pushing from the top, from the uh, pipes. I don't want to push on the aluminum and bend it on those fins. So yeah, I can get a little bit more compression there. And the WD Black SN850 is single-sided. 
I believe the Seagate Fire Cuda, if I remember correctly, someone said it's double-sided. Excuse me, the Seagate Fire Cuda 530. But I have not seen it, so I don't know that for a fact. Okay, screws are secure. We have our unit assembled. Looks nice and clean. Good clearance for the screw on the left to attach this to the motherboard. And good clearance on the M.2 connector on the right to secure it electrically. And when this goes in and turns like this, with the fan on this side, we should be blowing that way onto the CPU. Let's take a look. Okay, M.2 connector at the top and the screw connector at the bottom with the fan on that side blowing that way toward the CPU. But remember, in the first 16 lane slot right here, we have a quad card. So we'll drop this in, secure it. Gosh, I can't get over how big that thing is. And the double screw that goes on the motherboard, those two pieces are together. Because the screwdriver I have is so big, I'm going to see if I can use this screwdriver that came with it that has a long wand to get, yes, that'll clear perfect, to get that screw going straight down. Otherwise, I was going in at an angle. And it looks like I don't quite clear that bushing. So what I'm going to need to do, I've got two options. I can either uh, use their screw to put this on the motherboard, or I can try pushing that back a little bit. And I think what I need to do, because I've got clearance, is to uh, readjust the heat sink on the memory. I've not had that problem with any of the others that we worked on. But, let me turn this so we can get a better view of it. Since this dimension is crucial for that screw that secures the drive, I have enough room here where I can adjust and slide this so the memory is in a better position. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to loosen this and reattach. I should not have to take this all the way out. We shall see. And using a screwdriver, on that little notch, I pushed that forward so that this end is perfectly lined up and will clear. So on the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare, it's extremely important to get that alignment right. So I'll push down on it, tighten it back up, get those screws secured, and we've got better alignment this time. Let's see how that's going to work for us. Yeah, that should be better. To reiterate, when it was loose, I just pushed in from that notch to get this aligned up so that that screw will clear this, this area in this ridge. This one seems to be more crucial on that alignment for that screw to go on there. So let's see. Get our alignment right. Yes. Let's see if I can tilt that just a little bit. The alignment of that screw right there, there's a knurled fitting standoff on the motherboard that needed to clear the aluminum bracket. So by realigning that, that now clears and that memory is now setting down where it needs to so that that groove clears. Let's see. I have not had that to be a problem with any of the other drives. Now this double screw that goes on provided by Gigabyte, the top part of the screw is round, but the bottom part that you get to with a wrench, that's what we were hitting on. And let's see if their magnetic screwdriver is strong enough to hold on to that to install it. Yes, my number one Phillips was too big around in diameter to fit down over that. However, the screw clears and using their screwdriver has the length to clear that heat sink to go straight down. So I hope you can see that well enough what I'm doing with that screw right there. Tilt that just a little bit right there. That was tedious. Okay, that's installed. Now we'll get the video card back in. Now, for those that are wondering why this is open, that long heat sink right there, that's where the other two M.2 NVMe drives are installed or could be installed that are slower that go through the chipset. These two here are the fastest. That's the boot drive right there. That's a quad card right there with four drives. That's a 16 lane slot. And that's the second M.2 connector to the CPU. And then our GPU will sit right over the top of this that's two slots wide that uses a 16 lane slot. Got that? Okay, GPU is now secure. Now we've got to find a home for this cable that's plenty long on the motherboard. So I need to double check which connector I'm going on on the motherboard. Bear with me. Okay, up here in the top right, we have a system fan 6A and a system fan 6B. And I don't remember which one's which, so we're going to have to go into the BIOS and double check. One of these has a setting. The other one doesn't exist. 
and I don't I don't remember which one it is. So I'm going to take a guess, and I'm going to hook that up to System Fan 6A, which will be the one right there on the right. And that would put us on the motherboard right over here. And remember, this is a four-pin plug, but it's actually a three-pin fan. So much for that. Now, when we get into the motherboard BIOS, if that's on the wrong connector, then I'll have to change it, and I won't know until I get into the BIOS. Okay, the NEO heatsink is installed. Big. Let's take a look at the clearance there next to the video card. It's kind of hard to tell, but that space between the uh, heat sink and the video card is about a quarter of an inch right up next to it. And we're going to be taking blowing air that way because we put the fan on this side this way instead of blowing the fan against the video card. We'll see how that works. Okay, system check. Video card's reinstalled. Display plugged back in. Secured. Okay, let's do a system check. M.2 drive, heat sink installed. NEO heat sink is plugged into the motherboard to control the fan off and on. Video cards installed. We have video plugged back in. Plug in power. Now this time we're going to need to go into the BIOS so we can see what that fan's doing and see uh, what kind of RPMs we're getting based on what they told us. If we're on the wrong connector, then we're going to have to power down, change the connector because I don't remember who's on first. But I do know one of them works and one of them doesn't, which is kind of dumb. But it is what it is. So we'll power on. Energize. We're good. So we got three things going on. We know we have power to the GPU. We can also see our post codes. And we also have right here in the top right for the post for the power on self test. Once I hear post, then we're going to go into the BIOS. We're going to check the fans. And yes, there's other software that can do it, but I'm trying to keep this simple. I don't want anything extemporaneous running. Um, we can get into that part of the discussion or another video as well as uh, systems to control how we manage these fans if you're using a lot of these. That's something else we may get into. We talked about in the last NEO video, but after we kind of discounted that NEO cooler, that kind of fell by the wayside. So I'm eager to see how this works. BIOS. Okay, on the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare, I'm going to go to the simple, which will be, first of all, Easy Mode F2. And in the top left, we can see we're on the TRX40 Designare BIOS version F4Q. And we're running a uh, 3970 processor. And we can see our system fans. System fan 6A, which happens to be right up there. System fan 6A. So I picked the right one. Now there's nothing we can do to control the speed of it, but I'm going to go into the uh, fan controls and show you where that's at. So I will press for smart fan 5, I will press F6. And if I want to look at system fan 6A, speed control normal, fan temperature use input CPU, temperature interval 3. Now this says in the top right the temperature is 41 degrees centigrade, fan speed just under 5,000 RPM. But because it is a three pin, there's not much I can do about it. But we're at 41 degrees. So now what we want to do is save the BIOS, go into Windows, get our two applications up so we can do our test. Check that temperature so remember 41 degrees and we'll see how that compares. I want to show you the chart right quick for the temperatures before we get to this and we'll look at it again after the test, after the first test, second test, and the third test. And that's the results so far. If this gets any more, gets any smaller, we're going to be on two pages. Anyway, number one, and this is numbered from 1 to 18, we're, but remember this is actually drive number 12 because we started number one with the WD Black SN850 at 92 degrees. And number two, the TRX40 Designare is the second heat sink with one thermal pad at 65 degrees in that location on the motherboard. And all the other tests, until we get down to the NEO, the first time we tested the NEO. Anyway, to reiterate, all those other tests for those heat sinks for M.2 NVMe drives were number one on dual M.2 NVMe adapter by Supermicro. Number two, they would also be applicable to a quad adapter that needs a cooler that does not have one. Number three, they would be applicable also to a motherboard in a situation like we're doing right now, because this only works on the motherboard. And our two top performers, Number five, the Sabrent Rocket 3 heat pipe at 54 degrees. Number nine, the Acidity 4 pipe at 48 degrees. And then number 10 and 11, that's when we started doing the uh, dual testing. Looking at the NEO Aluminum, and that was the first NEO we did, which is called the M4, which is the C2600-2. It had a 20 millimeter fan. Okay. With the fan, active cooling, 61 degrees. Without the fan, passive cooling, 67. Then we did the Thermal Grizzly, the EKWB. First on the dual, then on the motherboard. So it compares on the motherboard with what we're doing now, 67. Then we did the copper from the Gigabyte Aorus. I love that one. That was great. And by the way, that does fit in a PS5. Heard from one of our subscribers today to affirm that fact. And I love the temps we got on it. 
And then, of course, the last test we just did was the DigiFast. 17 on the dual M.2 NVMe adapter by Supermicro, 56 degrees. And then the DigiFast on the motherboard, again to reiterate, in that second position at 62 degrees. And with the goal being we want to keep it under 80 degrees, another question came up about an operating temperature for a drive. So I want to show you the specs on the WD Black SN850 so you'll understand where I'm coming from. I should have done this before. I hadn't, but I'm going to do it right now. Now this is the PDF data sheet on the WD Black SN850. We're going to go down to page 3. It's going to give us the details we're looking for. And over here on the right, if you'll notice, operating temperature specifications. Operating temperature up to 70 degrees centigrade. Non-operating temperature up to 85. And my goal has always been to keep it under 80 degrees. And the three new drives that we've mentioned in the last video, I'll have linked in this that we're going to start looking at. Uh, I'll just say those three drives, that's the future because it's not just about 7,000 megabytes on the read, but it's almost 7,000 megabytes on the write. That's about AMD, Fizen on the E18 controller using AMD Ryzen Master. Six tweaks. Another video. Let's carry on. So now remember, oh, we're up to 43. Fantastic. Okay, we started at 41, we're 43. So keep that thought. We need to uh, reboot the computer, get through the BIOS post, and um, head into Windows so we can do our test. Now, since we have three tests to do, I've got some more information I'm going to share with you. I want to try to keep this tight, so I'm going to show you the test as we start it. Then I'll show you the test when we end it. Then we can talk, look at the results, compare again. So we can get our three tests in and keep this tight. And by the way, while we're waiting on this to boot, I want to thank you for joining us. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. Welcome. Okay, hardware info 64. Sensors only. And we're looking at smart telemetry for the WD Black SN850. And it shows us at 42 degrees. We'll call up Crystal Disk Mark. This is a one terabyte drive. We should be drive D. One gigabyte test file. All. Highlight. Let's see what happens. First run of the test complete. 42 degrees was the minimum. 53 degrees is the maximum. Wow. Impressive. And that was active cooling. And as we look at the chart, the Acidly still wins at 48 degrees. And the Sabrent Rocket 3 heat pipe number 5 at 54 degrees. And this came in at 53. So uh, that's active cooling with a 30 millimeter fan. Okay, now we got to power down, pull the cable, run the test again. See what kind of results we get with passive cooling. Then test number three will be to swap out the fan and see if we can improve those results. The other thing that would improve those results, of course, would be the uh, thermal pads. But uh, every one of these just uh, takes a little time to digest what we're seeing, what we're witnessing, what we're experiencing. Because, uh, you know, based on what people had said that I had read on Amazon, I was expecting something in 40 degrees. And I was expecting something closer to the Acidly. However, the Acidly was four heat pipe. The Sabrent, three heat pipe. And this, two heat pipe. So count your heat pipes. It matters. Okay, test number two. We will do a screen capture. Power down. Power off. Press power button. Drain it. Done. Pull power. That way no power. Don't have to worry about it. And all we have to do is uh, pull the fan. Okay, cable removed on the fan. Quick and painless. Plug power back in. Turn it on. Energize. Back we go. What can I say? In the weeds, down the rabbit hole. Okay, we've gone from uh, active cooling to passive cooling while the system is booting and I'm waiting on post, power on self-test. I want to interject this right now while it's in my head. I could hear coil whine, which was one of the fans. The MOSFET fan has been one of the problems a lot of people have been complained about on the Gigabyte TRX40 designator. However, the coil whine I've been hearing, I think, is that fan on the Enio as I hear it cycling in and out. Now, I can hear the MOSFET fan right now, but it's quiet compared to the fan on the Enio. So that fan, test number three, needs to be changed. Okay, let's do test number two and see what kind of results we get. Hardware info 64, sensors only, and we're watching Smart Telemetry on the WD Black SN850. Minimum, max, and average. So we're looking at our minimum of 43 degrees. Crystal disk mark, drive D, one terabyte, one gigabyte. Test, highlight. Let's see where we go to this time. So in active cooling, we were 53 degrees. With passive cooling, I wonder if we'll stay below 60. We'll see. Test number two complete. We topped out with passive cooling on this one at 56 degrees compared to 53 degrees active cooling previously. So test number one, test number two. And looking again at the chart, number nine, the Acidly 4 pipe is still the winner at 48 degrees. And that 
is using the stock pads. We haven't gone custom pads yet. We haven't gone into the uh, Thermal Grizzly. Only the Thermal Grizzly cooler has used the Thermal Grizzly pads so far. Uh, this is most enlightening. Now we got to do test number three. So we got to power down, pull that fan off, which means another unboxing. See what goes. So we'll do a print screen and I will record that number at 56 degrees. I want to interject this right quick, looking back at the chart, just to point out 17 and 18 on the Digifast, the previous heat sink. On the dual M.2 NVMe adapter, we got 56 degrees. Okay, on the motherboard, which is where we're at right now with this one, we're at 62 degrees. So that 62 degrees compared with this of 56 degrees. It's interesting. As I, as I mentioned earlier, to reiterate, my goal was I was curious. You know, we want to keep it below 80, but, but will this stay below 60? And it did. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Okay, power down. Test three. Off, power, drained, unplug. We have to pull the uh, video out. Display adapter removed. And out comes the NEO M3. This longer screwdriver they provided is essential. However, okay, remove the device, out we go. And for those curious about our operating parameters, right now we are at 44% humidity, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can extrapolate that to the uh, Celsius. Okay, unboxing number two. I don't see a separate video for this. I think it all needs to be part of it. We're going with one of my favorites, Noctua. And we're going to see if we've got the right fan. We're going to find out. I ordered the one based on what another user had commented that they were using, that they had upgraded to on Amazon. One person provided the details. So let's see how this is going to work. If I have the right fan, you will see this. If I have the wrong fan, you won't see this. And of the parts that we need, the only thing we need is the fan. And that's going to be a problem with the length of that cable. And these extensions... Yeah, there's an extension cable. Okay, that'll work. An extension cable, a Y cable, and a low noise adapter, which means it has a resistor in it because it reduces the uh, RPMs. We don't want to use that. And other parts in here, and case screws. Our goal would be to use the screws that are already here. Love the length of that cable, it's perfect. So this fan, and possibly these cables, these other parts here, we won't use. And this is the Noctua nf dash. A 4x20 PWM, pulse wave modulation. Okay, based on this fan, I want to see which way it's blowing. And it's marked here on the top. If you'll notice the fan to blow that way, the label has to be going that direction. Which makes me question, when I put this one in, I thought with the fan on this side that I was blowing that way. So when I take this fan off to see if I was blowing that way, we'll check it because I don't want the fan blowing on the video card. I want it blowing away from the video card. Let's see. So those ought to come out with a number two Phillips, and they do. Now how on earth somebody put that fan? No, that's not gonna work. I would have to use a 20 millimeter fan. I wondered how they were doing that, besides the way that sticks out on the side. So that's not gonna work. Well, that's the fan somebody said they were using. If they did, that won't fit next to the video card, because next to the video card, I've only got about a quarter of an inch, which would get us to right there. So that stops that. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I was in hopes we was going to do a third part on this test. I'll do some research on the fan, because I know what somebody said, but I don't see how he did it. But we've got to have a 30 millimeter fan, and uh, not to it doesn't make a 30 millimeter. I think they've got a 20 millimeter, but the fan does make some noise. So the knock to a 40 millimeter fan is out. I wondered how that was going to work. We don't know till we try. All for research. So that'll save the rest of you some grief if you think you're going to try it. Don't. Let's go back to our chart. So let's look at our results on the chart. And I will update this and share this with you in the next video, whatever it is we're going to do, just as a side note. Uh, but to reiterate, on the NEO M3, which will now be number 19 and 20, with active cooling 53 degrees Celsius, with passive cooling 56 degrees Celsius. So we were going to do a fan with the knock to it to try to get the noise down. The fan we have is not going to work. Purchase the fan based on what somebody on Amazon said. I'll go back and double check that because um, that cannot stick out past that. That's going to have to be uh, either a 30 millimeter fan or a 20 millimeter fan. So I'll do some more checking and I'll get back to you on that. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Builder by 
Look forward to seeing you next video. We're out.